From its 2017 IPO through the end of 2021, Carvana stock was one of the greatest stocks on the market, going up about 2,000%. Just to put these numbers into a little bit of context, if you had invested $10,000 at Carvana's IPO, you would have had about $200,000 less than five years later. 2022 has been a completely different story for Carvana investors with the stock down about 98% for the year. I mean, seriously, it doesn't get much worse than that. Now, some investors are blaming short sellers. These are investors who bet on the stock going down. They make money if the stock goes down, but the numbers don't really back this up. Consider that Carvana stock hit its peak in August of 2021, and short interest in the stock was already coming down at that point. From there, Carvana stock started dropping in 2021, but short interest continued to decline for the rest of the year. Only after the stock was down 40% did short interest start coming back up, and only after the stock was down 80% did short interest re levels that it was at before. In other words, it looks like people started betting against Carvana stock the more that it went down, not that it went down because people were betting against it. It's important, therefore, to look at the real reason Carvana stock was down in 2022, and embedded in its decline is yet another very important lesson from investing great Warren Buffett. Hi, my name is John Quas. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel, Working Capital. On this channel, it's all about learning about money stuff and then doing something about it. And I think you will have an actionable takeaway here from Buffett by the time we're done. Okay, so let's start by acknowledging the incredible growth that Carvana has experienced. In 2016, the company generated only about $365 million in revenue, which is still pretty good. However, in 2021, it generated a whopping $12.8 billion in revenue. That is up 35 times in just five years. Moreover, in the second quarter of 2021, the company finally turned its first ever profit, which was very exciting for the market. And management and analysts started crediting the business for creating enough scale to generate those profits. As management wrote in its letter to shareholders, it was a testament to the power of the business model. However, there was more going on under the surface that needs to be recognized. First, used car prices are at an all-time high and historically ridiculously overpriced. We can track this with something called the Mannheim Used Car Vehicle Index, which shows that car prices were roughly double where they would be normally at the beginning of this year. Why was that? Well, there's a couple things going on. First, you had cheap financing. Most people buy a used car with a loan and because the interest rates were so low in 2020, 2021, you could afford a higher priced used car because you were paying less in interest. So that had the effect of causing people to overpay for a used car, sending the prices up. You also had government stimulus money that was contributing to people's disposable income. You also had semiconductor chip shortages for new cars, and this was causing a bottleneck in the new car market, which was leading to people to pursue used cars more than they otherwise would. This confluence of factors sent Carvana's gross profit per unit or per car that they were selling, pushed it to around around 5,000 per vehicle, which was a historical anomaly for Carvana and really benefited the business. These confluence of factors was a temporary thing. It wasn't something that was created by the scale of the business. It was caused by macroeconomic factors. Management did even recognize this in its letter to shareholders. It wrote that the unique macro environment provided a tailwind. Really, in my opinion, Carvana is a really great thing for consumers. It's convenient. It's e-commerce for used cars. You don't have to talk to a dealer. You can just do it all remotely. They'll come pick up your car. They'll deliver your car. You can go to one of their vending machines. It's a very user-friendly service. However, Carvana hasn't been a great thing for shareholders because in my opinion, the business is structurally unprofitable. For example, Carvana's convenience comes at a great price. Selling general and administrative expenses for Carvana are much higher than than they would be for one of Carvana's competitors. The reason is there's added cost in things like delivery and pickup and the vending machines and all this. Even with gross profit per unit hitting all-time highs in 2021, selling general and administrative expenses for Carvana still were more than its gross profit in 2021. And through the first three quarters of 2022, selling general and administrative expenses for the company have been more than double its gross profit. This is what I call structurally 
unprofitable. Now, Warren Buffett has warned investors about structurally unprofitable companies before and the price that investors pay for growth in those businesses. As he wrote in his 1992 letter to Berkshire Hathaway shareholders, it's true growth often has a positive effect on value, sometimes one of spectacular proportions, but such an effect is far from certain. This really stands in contrast to what many investors believe. They often believe that you should pursue growth companies at all costs. But what Buffett reminds us of here is that not all growth is good. For some companies, as they grow that business, the losses widen. Because of everything that we looked at, Carvana has put itself in a really difficult position for 2023. Inventory did already peak in the second quarter of 2022 and it started to come back down. However, the company was adding used car inventory aggressively in the year leading up to right now. That's particularly problematic because again, going back to the Mannheim used car vehicle index, prices started jumping up around April of 2021 and remained at about double their normal level for the rest of 2021 and for most of 2022. In other words, Carvana has aggressively built up its inventory at temporarily inflated prices. Now it seems that the consumer is less inclined to pay those elevated prices. For one, we have the interest rates coming up. This means that people can afford less. We also have more new cars coming on the market as those supply chain shortages work themselves out. And moreover, dropping used car prices are kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If they start to come down, consumers tend to wait to buy a used car, hoping that they come down even more. And it's kind of a thing that is like a snowball rolling down the hill. Once it gets a little bit of momentum, it tends to pick up some speed. And that is happening right now. Used car prices are dropping and Carvana is stuck holding the bag of this temporarily inflated inventory. All this points to a further decline in gross profit per unit for Carvana in 2023, as they are forced to sell used cars for lower and lower prices on inventory that they paid very high prices for. The problem is we've already noted that selling general and administrative expenses are very, very high for an already slim and weakening gross profit. And there's another problem as well. Carvana's management is talking about its path to profitability, but it's talking about adjusted EBITDA or adjusted earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. The real important letter in that equation is I, interest. Keep in mind that it's only targeting about 8% to 13% profitability in EBITDA long term. However, that I, the interest that they are forced to pay on all the debt that they've taken out is going up very, very fast. In the most recent quarter, the third quarter of 2022, it paid $153 million in interest expense. This is basically triple what it was the year before, and it was a whopping 43% of its gross profit. All this put together, I don't expect Carvana to have good returns in 2023, even though it's had such poor returns in 2022. The takeaway here for viewers, I believe, is that you should not just focus on revenue revenue growth as the end all be all in your stock investing. That would be really easy to do. You could just use a stock screener and just screen for whatever is the highest growth company and just invest in that. But Buffett reminds us that not all growth is created equal. Some growth does really help the company in creating shareholder value. For other companies, it helps them destroy shareholder value faster. In my opinion, Carvana is the latter and surely there are going to be other stocks like that in the future. So always remember, it's it's not just about the growth, but it's about the quality of the growth. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in more investing wisdom from Warren Buffett, you might be interested in this video where I explain why Warren Buffett would never buy Bitcoin. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.